Praise God. Let's bow our heads for prayer. Our loving Father in heaven, we're here today as men and women who support men. And we want to see men who are strong, who are courageous, and who are leaders. So I ask you'll bless Graham. Thank you for his ministry. Thank you for um, the message he has to share. And may it strengthen us as men to, to serve you more. As we pray in thy name. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Thanks, Darren. Well, thank you all for your uh, for your visitation over at the at the family ministries tent yesterday, and for creating a problem where we need to speak to a bigger facility. That's a really good problem, and uh, we're happy to address that. So, thank you for coming, and thank you for your support and for your comments and feedback over the last 24 hours or so. We talked yesterday about my story, which is it might have sounded fairly dramatic, but it is a fairly common story. Everybody has a story to tell and since Michelle and I have given our testimonies in the last couple of days We've heard some amazing stories from people in this campground Incredible stories some of which make ours pale into insignificance And I can tell you that there was one particular story one of our volunteers years ago When we ran our 12-step recovery ministry one of our volunteers was a lady who was 60 years old had been born and bred into the Seventh-day Adventist Church and was very active in the church and followed all the, the principles and the fundamentals and she was a good solid Seventh-day Adventist woman. Now she came along to our recovery ministry because she wanted to help and be a volunteer. Now when we set up our recovery ministry we took people through the program, the 12-step program, our volunteers, so that they knew what they were helping out in. And as a result this lovely lady participated and realized she was going through her own 12-step healing process and she got to a stage where when she was hearing everybody else's story she realized that she didn't really have a testimony because her life had just ticked along and everything was fine and when all the volunteers had finished the program and they were getting ready to give their testimony to the group Judy said to us I feel a bit left out because I don't have a testimony and I don't know why I said it, but I said to her, well, maybe you don't have a testimony because you don't have a relationship with Jesus. And the next day she came around and it was a watershed moment for her because she realized that she had been doing everything fundamentally correct, but getting her way to salvation through works. And she realized that she really didn't have a relationship with Jesus. And she realized that in the thinking through that process that there are a whole lot of other issues that she had that were serious issues in her life which she just kept pushing under the carpet which we all can do I did it for years in her testimony she now stands up before people and she says basically that it wasn't until I did celebrate recovery that I realized I didn't have a relationship with Jesus after 60 odd years of being a Seventh-day Adventist that testimony hits people who are in that position right between the eyes. Our testimony can go on for an hour and a half and talk about all the, the horrible things that have happened in our lives, but somebody like Judy can stand up in five minutes and give you a heart-wrenching testimony that many of you might be able to relate to. Everybody has a story. What does the word authentic mean? We're talking about authentic manhood. Yesterday I talked about how I didn't want to have relationships that weren't authentic in my life anymore because I look back on all those shallow duck diving, I call them, relationships where you just go below the surface and you never talk about anything real. And men are good at this. We talk about sport, fishing, whatever, whatever your hobby or activity might be. But there's no depth in our conversations, many of us. A lot of Christian men are having really good conversations about the Bible and about relationships with Jesus but still they're not revealing those things in their lives that need to be talked about so what does authentic mean now if any of you heard Ty Gibson last night you would have got a beautiful explanation of authentic it's about your true identity and if we are to see that something that is authentic is real and true then anything that isn't authentic is a counterfeit am I right Anything that is not authentic is a counterfeit. And who is the Lord of counterfeits? 
Who is the Lord of counterfeits in our world? Satan. Amen. And when we're not being authentic, especially as Christians, we are following the doctrine of Satan. Because God and Jesus are the Lord. Jesus Christ is the Lord of hope, faith, love, honesty, authenticity and transparency. He gave you your identity. Your identity is in him. As we talked about yesterday with some friends, we have the spiritual DNA of Jesus Christ. We are of the royal lineage. And all this stuff was coming up for me yesterday in the meeting last night and hearing Ty Gibson talk about what's in a name basically proved to me that if we can't be real with each other then what's the point if jesus christ made us the way we are and accepts us the way we are then why can't we be real with each other and men this is a really big issue that we have to come to terms with because as i said in my testimony yesterday i was going to kill myself in 2006 because I didn't know who I was anymore. I completely lost my identity with my pornography addiction, with my adultery, using all these various things that I put into my body to try and fill that God-shaped hole that could only be filled by God as, a, as an atheist. So I lost my identity and I was so broken as a man without an identity and as, as a man without authenticity that I wanted to end my life because my life meant nothing to me or anyone else, I thought. But God stepped in. And if God hadn't stepped in, we wouldn't be talking about this stuff today. If God hadn't stepped in with Michelle, with her testimony, and mine with mine, and let's face it, all we've got is a testimony. We're not pastors. All we have is a testimony. Without Jesus Christ, without the blood of Jesus shed on the cross for us at Calvary, we are nothing. But when Michelle and I accepted the price paid for us, our lives exploded with relevance. And I say this to men who are contemplating suicide, and there are probably men here who may be, because we know it's a prevalent thing in our society. Every two hours in this country, a man will take his own life. Some of you may have had friends who've done it, or family. When we do that, we give away so much. When we do that, we turn our backs on the, on the sacrifice that was made for us at the cross. I firmly believe that every man has two men living inside him. That which is good and that which is not good. And one of them needs to drown. And when we commit suicide, we take it one step too far. When I was baptised... I went through the Bible studies, but I've got to be honest with you, folks, it freaked me out. The stuff I was getting through the Bible study, trying to get through the, the process so I could be baptised quickly, was, in my mind, still outrageous to me. I still couldn't comprehend some of the context that was being imparted to me through the Bible study. And I just wanted to be baptised. So I went along with it. I faked it. Have you got any questions the pastor said? No, no, that all makes sense. But I just didn't want to linger in it because I didn't know how to get my head around this. But when I went into the water that day, I drowned the one that needed to drown. And sadly, when men take their own lives, they take it one step further because they drown the good and the bad. Now, if I had committed suicide, not only Michelle's life, my own life and my family, so everything would have been different very very different and now we're reaching out because i've now learned that you will never ever know when god is going to bring into your life something that will completely change your destiny if you accept him i believe as herb larson does he talks about god being the master creator the master draftsman of our lives and every day he loves us enough to pull a blueprint out of the filing cabinet, roll it out and redraw the plan for our lives around the mistakes we made the day before. When someone takes their own life, I imagine Jesus rolling out that plan, picking up his pen and looking down and seeing somebody hanging from a tree or sitting in a carbon monoxide filled car 
or screaming flat out wide awake at a tree on the side of the road making it look like an accident and he cries and he rolls up the blueprint he puts it in the tube and he seals it never ever ever more to be opened that's where I was headed that's where I was going and just two days before I was going to do it he brought Michelle into my life and all I had to do was at some stage before that accept that he existed and he took over the rest. Then I had to surrender. When I accepted that God existed, I surrendered completely and utterly because I realised I could not fix my life in my power. And he took over. And he gave me Michelle. And he gave me the Seventh-day Adventist church. And he gave me faith. And he gave me love. And he showed me a string of miracles that we're currently writing a book about that are convincing atheist friends of mine that I work with that it's no wonder that I believe in God. No wonder. Now if that hadn't happened when it did, through his intervention, all that wonder and all that majesty would have been lost in my life and the lives of people I connect with. Authentic manhood is about being real. Now sadly, in times of war, we see men come to the fore. We see men shine in times of war. I want to remind you all that we are in a war. We are in a constant battle, as the great controversy tells us. We are living in a constant time of war. So we should be on a war footing as men. Now let's see what war can do to people and what war can bring out in people when I show you this next video clip. <laughs> 